If you take a trip south of Casa Grande, down Thornton Road, you'll eventually spot a series of incredibly bizarre structures rising from the desert sands of Arizona. These abandoned domes, more reminiscent of the designs of a UFO and other buildings from sci-fi media than typical manufacturing plants, are certainly one of the most puzzling sights in the entire state. Even today, these domes remain at the center of many rumors and urban legends from tourists and locals alike. Perhaps stranger still is the method that workers used to achieve their iconic shapes. Today we discover the hidden mysteries of the lost domes of Casa Grande. I'm your host Ryan Sokash and you're watching It's History. The story of the domes begins with that of Casa Grande, a bustling city often referred to as the crossroads and heart of Arizona, in keeping with both its location between Phoenix and Tucson, but also its previous history as a railway town. Casa Grande started as a micro-village comprised of three buildings and five people, though it soon after took its humble beginnings and developed into a small town. As it grew, railroad executives decided to rename it to Casa Grande. The city was nothing less than resilient through the years, first thriving as a railroad thanks to the mining industry, though it was later taken over by agriculture at the end of the 19th century. Though fires raised the town twice within its first decade, it remained and developed into the Casa Grande that many Arizonians are familiar with today, Boasting a population of around 57,000, it continues to grow and develop. Moving forward to the early 1980s, a circuit board manufacturing company called Intercon Technology quickly recognized the area's potential as a place to expand the company's operations. It wasn't long before the company's owner, Patricia Zeb, made plans to transfer headquarters to Arizona and construct a new factory plant. Initially housed in Mountain View, California, and incorporated in 1968, the company was one of many that were all vying for the same thing, success in the mini and personal computing market, especially given the large amounts of business this particular market saw in Silicon Valley. As such, the domes were commissioned and groundbreaking for the project began not long afterward. Before work on the structures could commence, however, two main problems needed to be addressed. One was the fact that construction on one, let alone all seven of the planned buildings, would be incredibly expensive. The second was the simple fact that the Arizona heat would make finding a way to keep them all cool during the hotter months of the year crucial. It may sound unbelievable, but the two concerns were solved at once by the incredibly unique construction method used to build each dome. Let me explain. Workers on the project used a form of construction known as thermal shell construction. How it worked was simple yet incredibly effective. The foundation was set as usual and afterward a massive balloon-like tarp was mounted on top of it. This balloon-like tarp was then inflated and provided support by a set of steel trusses. Each dome was built from the inside. Workers sprayed a thick 3-inch polyurethane foam coating over each side of the tarp then layered it with a three inch layer of concrete reinforcement with metal fibers and added rebar. These layers served to form the structures themselves and provided a form of passive insulation against the desert heat. Once the foam and the concrete hardened, the tarp and truss system were removed, leaving behind the hollow space that manufacturing assembly lines would presumably occupy. This unique construction method took just six weeks for each dome and, as such, significantly cut the cost for each building. A series of narrow tunnels were constructed underneath the site's eastern end to be used as conduits for ventilation and piping fluids used in the manufacturing process. These tunnels, while closed, remain until this very day. During construction, many people held high hopes for the future of the company's 
company's new location, with hopes of expanding into the manufacturing of quartz watches and large computers. Once complete, the group of large, segmented buildings would be used for manufacturing. The larger, saucer-shaped structure would serve as the main office building and headquarters for Intercon. But as you might imagine from these desolate images, something went wrong. Well, the company that built the domes is still around today and has built domes in many different states and over 50 foreign countries. Curiously, the tarp used to create the largest Casa Grande dome was later reconfigured for the Monolithic Dome Institute's headquarters in Italy. The initial four buildings cost around $150,000 each to construct, and once they were completed, Intercon's owner offered the following remarks in an interview, quote, I am happy, but I am scared. There's still a lot of work to do, so I'll be glad when I see the first board come off the planting line. Sadly, this work would never be finished, as the foundations were laid out for three additional buildings, they were never completed, as the company went bankrupt just a year later. And as we will see in a moment, the dome's uniqueness both set them apart and doomed them. You see, its unique structure made it nearly impossible to repurpose, and after Intercon declared bankruptcy, it, along with the rest of the company's assets, were assumed by the Union of California and left unfinished and unused. The concrete continued to erode as the years passed, and the buildings sat eternally empty. Though they were purchased years later by Casa Grande residents Daniel and Karen Peer in 2016, Unfortunately, at the same time, the EPA deemed the property unsafe due to the presence of toxic chemicals in the groundwater under the site. Then, in 2016, the back of one of the domes partially collapsed and caused a call for demolition. The property owners settled an agreement to clean up the area in exchange for leaving it standing as it had since become something of a hotbed for legal dumping. However, this effort was more or less fruitless as in 2018, one of the domes fully collapsed. And as a result, they were once again ordered for demolition. Yet despite the second order, the remaining domes still stand today. However, it should definitely be noted that the remaining structures are condemned for their lack of safety. Thanks to a feature on the Travel Channel's popular show Ghost Adventures, the domes saw a surge in interest, both for artists and those who were itching to see if there was any truth to the myths surrounding them. In the past, others have also rented them out for various types of gatherings, Though the owners have tried to put the property up for sale multiple times over the years, they have thus far been unable to find any buyers. As of now, it is undoubtedly best to admire the domes from afar, seeing as structural integrity aside, the property is still owned privately. Trespassers without permission and who have not paid the entry fee face prosecution by local law enforcement, along with potential arrests and heavy fines. But still, while the domes themselves sit long abandoned, they have ended up an unexpected contributor to the artistic scene. For example, Boots, an LA-based artist who stenciled her poetry onto one of the walls of the domes, had this to say, The domes are dreary, but have a sense of hope. Their oddness alone is appealing. Random domes in the middle of the desert have become a tourist attraction. Though the domes were abandoned before their story could truly start, it is fascinating to wonder just how successful they might have been if they were completed and put into use. But I suppose this kind of recollection doesn't even matter as fate called on them to stand as a bizarre mystery in the middle of Arizona's desert, which is perhaps a fate even more legendary than that of a factory. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and feel free to send me episode requests on Instagram. Definitely consider supporting the channel by clicking subscribe or join. And don't miss our playlist on Arizona history. Until next time, this is Ryan Sokash signing off.